Hello beautiful people, hello beautiful world, welcome back. My name is Ashley Renice and we are starting a new series titled You 2.0. <laughs> I am really excited for this series because it is going to delve into everything that you need to uncover and discover and explore as you start this journey of self-improvement. And in this first episode, we are going to be talking about self-improvement with ease. How to start your self-improvement journey with ease. You've probably already been on a self-improvement journey or you're just starting to know, you're like, you know what? I know that there's more for me out there and I want to achieve that potential. I want to be striving for that. You are probably already on the journey or you just started the journey. But regardless, I want you to know <laughs> that you can do it with ease. And that's what we'll be discussing in this video, how to start your self-improvement journey with ease. So without further ado, let's get into it. And by the way, if you are listening on the podcast and I know you just heard me say in this video, that's because we are doing it two ways, baby. Okay. We got the video and we have the podcast. So for those of you who are watching on YouTube right now, whenever you don't feel like being on YouTube, but you want to catch the episodes, please search Ashley Rennie's podcast everywhere that you have podcasts and just hit the follow button or the like button. And I would really appreciate it if you leave me a review because five stars sounds pretty good. And if you are listening on the podcast and sometimes you want to see my face and my expressions, you can find me on YouTube at Ashley Rennie's. <laughs> So enough housekeeping, let's get into today's episode. All right. Now, when it comes on to self-improvement, I know there are tons of videos and tons of content, tons of information out there with self-improvement, but I want you to enter into this conversation, this dialogue, this, um, talk that we're about to have, I want you to enter into it with an open mind, okay? Because I will be challenging some beliefs in this episode and I want you to really just think about what I'm saying. Just think about it. You don't have to accept it right now. You know, I'm a big, big believer in not just blindly accepting things. You don't have to accept it right now, but I want you to just think about what I'm about to talk about. I came to the realization that we may have been tricked, bamboozled, run amok. Okay. Is run amok the right phrase? I don't know. But we may have been tricked into thinking that everything in this life has to be hard. Even us trying to improve ourselves. Let me not even say even us especially us trying to improve ourselves and become the best version of ourselves that we can be. We have been taught that it has to be a hard journey. And this is not something that's just happening now, but it's just in the culture of how we were brought up and the things that we saw. Now, I grew up in Jamaica, I always feel proud to say that because Jamaica is amazing. Okay, I'm just saying. Yeah. I grew up in Jamaica and though everyone took it fairly easy, you know, you all know island time and all those things. There was this underlying understanding that life is hard. There was this underlying understanding that in order to get anywhere in life in order to get anything you have to work hard and it has to be an uphill battle there was just this unspoken and to be honest not just unspoken sometimes spoken very loudly that if you want to get anywhere it's gonna be hard so prepare yourself and that was what was sort of um just told 
over and over and in every little interaction that you had. That's just what it is. I want you to understand that within this conversation, there is a caveat. And the caveat is that there is some merit to this belief, right? But I also want to show you that though this belief has merit, we may have given it too much merit, okay? Because I grew up seeing persons settle. When I say settle, I mean, you know how rocks settle at the bottom of the ocean? Yeah, I grew up seeing persons settle for less than what they could have had simply because they gave that belief too much merit. And if you're someone that hasn't been given that belief too much merit, kudos to you. But we want to really use this time to dissect and to figure out if we are giving it too much merit and how to stop giving it too much merit so that as we are on this journey of self-improvement, we're on it in an easy type of way. Not that the journey is going to be easy, but the way that we are taking on the journey is filled with ease. You get me? Okay. So as I grew up and I saw this person settling, I also realized that they were just settling with what was handed down to them. And one thing that was handed down to them was the belief that it had to be hard. So they just settled with it because, hey, that's what my grandma told me. That's what her mom told her. And that's what her mom told her. Like, it has to be hard. There is no other way. And specifically within the Black community, and if you're not Black, then that's okay. We welcome you too. But specifically in the Black community, because of our history, or at least the history that we are told, the history that we are made aware of over and over again, because of that particular history, we tend to start to believe that, oh yeah, it was really hard for my ancestors, so it's got to be hard for me. But I want to challenge that belief in this video. Are you ready? So let's continue. I would say persons who were completely, like, so talented at being a mechanic, at, you know, being an architect, at being a general contractor, at being an electrician. No, I'm not going to laugh. <laughs> Some people were getting electrocuted. Okay, but I saw persons who were so talented in these things and they never went to school for it. They just watched, they understood, they tried, failed, tried again, and then mastered the thing. And I saw them look at it and not do anything with that talent or that gift because it came so easy to them. And one personal story that I even have, and not really a story, but just an experience is my aunts on my mother's side they are gifted with their hands in terms of hairdressing and hairstyling when i tell you i never had to pay a dime when i was in school to get my hair done because they would always slay my hair my mom my two aunts and of course my mom's friends but yeah they were just really gifted at it but they never really took it up because to them, it came to them so easily. So it's like, hmm, or at least this is my speculation because I've seen it time and time again, where because a thing comes to you so easily, it's like, this can't possibly be the key to me living the life of my dreams. This can't possibly be the key to me living out my purpose because I can do this in my sleep. And I'm here to let you know that the mere fact that you can do this in your sleep is God showing you that this is the key to living the life that you were meant to live. This is the key to taking care of your family. This is the key to unlocking your full potential. But we have been taught this belief that because it's easy, it cannot be. And the belief is a lie. The fact that it is easy is a hint that you're on the right path. Now, as I said, this entire conversation is being had with a slight caveat. I want you to understand that there will be hard times. That is just how life is. You set an intention, okay? You set up to do that intention and what will follow every time is some form of disruption. That is just a principle. You set out to do something, 
bam, something comes up, it's a disruption or it's a distraction. And those are the things, it's those little resistance that kind of make um, life feel hard or make the journey feel um, hard, right? So there will be those things. So I'm not saying you're just going to be cruising down like you're on whatever highway you want to call right now. You're headed to, <laughs> you're headed to an all-inclusive just cruising. I'm not saying that that's what it's going to be. Right. I'm not saying that there won't be some hardships. But what I am saying is that first step, that time that you have taken and you have, you know, tried to wrap your brain around. What am I meant to be doing? What is the key to me unlocking my potential? What is the key to me on my self-improvement journey? So when you come up on the question of, OK. I see the path. I know that's the path I'm to go down, but I don't know what vehicle to take down the path, right? The road looks a little rocky, but I don't know what vehicle to take down the path. And remember, I said there are going to be hard times. So you're looking and those hard times are the little rocks in the road. And you're trying to figure out what vehicle should I take down that path to get to where I'm supposed to go, which is my fullest self, my potential unlocked. What vehicle should I take? Now, the decision of where to go shouldn't be a hard one. But you know what should even be easier is that question of what vehicle to take. That thing that you were born with in your hand, it's always there to show you that, hey, that's the vehicle that you should take. That's the vehicle that makes the most sense because you didn't have to go to school for it. You didn't have to do anything. All you had to do was exist and take it down the path. So you're looking at all these vehicles and you see, oh, um, public speaking or just communicating in general, or you see something like creative design, or you see something like, um, um, I can't come up with another one, but you get, you get the point. You have all of these gifts and all of these talents, because I know that a lot of us are multi-passionate. I am a multi-passionate person. I can be passionate about so many things all at once. And when I was at the point where I was starting this self-improvement journey and I was determined to unlocking my full potential and it was like, God, what should I be doing? What should I take? And I remember I started hopping in some cars. Okay. I was hopping in the, the, the design cars, the creative design cars, because I could do it. And I was passionate about it, but did it come the easiest to me? Nope. Then I was hopping in, um, just surface level motivational, that, that particular vehicle, I could do it. But was it the easiest thing for me to do? No. Why wasn't it the easiest thing for me to do? Because I didn't always feel like doing that. And then I said, what have I always been doing? I've always been teaching people and sharing my concepts and my ideas that they're not even really mine. They just come up in my head and then I Google it and I see that, wow, it's a thing. And I've been doing that through my voice, through communicating. I've been doing that for so long, ever since I knew myself. And I was like, okay, but does this come the easiest to you? And I was like, yeah, it does. And I said, why was I trying to force myself into these other cars to go down the bumpy road when the most comfortable car for me is communicating? So I wanted to start thinking, What's the most comfortable car for you right now that you've been ignoring because it's too easy? You've been ignoring because you were born with it. You've been ignoring because how could that be? How could it be that I'm supposed to just show up as me? And that's what will help me to improve myself on this journey. How? That's it. I know, I know it sounds crazy because we've been taught that it has to be hard, but I'm here to show you that you can start the self-improvement journey with ease. And what I've also come to realize that it is the acquisition of a skill that really helps us to improve, but we're going to save that for another episode. So that was a very 
loaded introduction to answer the question, how do I then start my self-improvement journey with ease? How do I do that? Okay, yeah, what if I don't even know what the vehicle is because I have been putting it out of my mind for so long? So Ashley, how do I actually get this journey started? The answer to that question is two simple words. Know thyself. Know thyself. Know thyself. I am such a big believer. And I realize that people don't be talking about this. And I don't know why persons don't speak about this more. But the first step to anything is understanding who you are. And I know you're hearing me and you're probably like, girl, I know myself. I've been with her for how many odd years? 20 odd years, 30 odd years, 40 odd years, 50 odd years. I know who I am. And I'm not here to call you a liar, baby, because <laughs> I'm not in the business of calling persons liars, right? But I do want to remind you that people change. The only constant in this world is change. And so if the seasons change and the trees change and how the moon looks changes and a month to month, like the moon cycles, you know what I mean? And your body changes. <laughs> I would think that the only logical thing is to think, maybe I've changed. And because life goes so quickly, speed of light, oof, you can sometimes not even notice the changes that have happened within you, the changes in your interest and the changes in your personality. And Though you have had this vehicle that we spoke about forever, the way that it shows up can change as well. So I believe that the number one principle to beginning and constantly evolving while you're on this journey to self-improvement with ease is to be on a constant pursuit of self-discovery and self-understanding. So the first step on this journey is to understanding and knowing yourself. And who knows, maybe as I've been speaking, you've already been able to pinpoint what that vehicle is that you should be taking um, on this journey of self-improvement with ease, but maybe you don't. And you know, as a coach that have coached many women, I realized that the first answer is usually a surface level answer. I know sometimes people say the first answer is the right answer, but in a case like this, where we have kind of been told what to think <laughs> and we're challenging this limiting belief of, oh, my self-improvement journey has to be hard. In a case like that, sometimes that first answer is just the surface answer. And so in order to dig deeper, there are some questions that we have to ask ourselves to ensure that we are holding up a very accurate mirror to ourselves so that we can see ourselves clearly, fully, for exactly who we are. And I know that as we go through this, we may encounter some feelings of, oh my gosh, is this really me? And we can start freaking out because it's like, no, 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 I thought I was a different person. But let me tell you, let me tell you, I had a conversation with one of my best friends this morning and we were talking about self-acceptance, all right? And the very first step to self-acceptance is seeing you for you. Until you do that, you're not able to fully accept yourself. And until you fully accept yourself, this self-improvement journey, you're gonna have some resistance. So if we want to be on this journey with ease, because that's what we all about, we're going to hold up a very clear mirror. We're going to see an accurate depiction of ourselves. And then we're going to start our journey to accepting it. Okay. Now, um, in my signature course, Execution Made Easy, shameless plug, I do go into it a lot 
deeper. But if you just want to get started, I have these 14 questions, which not really questions. They're more like journal prompts that will help you to sort of get reacquainted with yourself. And I use these journal prompts to come back to self, to get a better understanding of who I am, what I truly want to be doing, the things that do actually come natural to me, especially with this world that we live in. So many things are vying for our attention that we can forget what we even like. <laughs> we can just start going down the rabbit hole of things that are presented to us instead of actually understanding who we are. So these are 14 journal prompts that you can go through it once a day, or you can go through two questions per day. But the point is to really take your time and go through these questions. I will have it linked both in the description box and in the show notes. It's a notion template. It's editable. You just make a duplicate and you have the questions. And I'll also just link the questions as well for those who aren't so tech savvy <laughs> and um, still want to reap the benefit. So now I'm going to take the time to go through each journal prompt because I want you to reap the full benefit of going through this process because there is something amazing inside of you that you've been able to do all this time and for some reason you either haven't taken the leap to say, you know what, I am fully committing to unlocking my full potential and fully committing to improving who I am and becoming the fullest version of myself. Either you haven't taken that leap or you kind of dipped your toe in and you came back or you took the leap and then you swam back because you were like, no, 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 no. Oh, this is too hard. Or, oh, it doesn't feel natural. Oh, um, I'm scared. If any of those are any of your reasons, that is fine. Okay. But I want you to understand that that thing, that thing that is in you, that you are called to do people are waiting on it all right because you are amazing you are a creation of an infinite god a god who loves and cares for you so much that he placed something on the inside of you for it to shine in this world And I know that it can come out. I know it. So the world is waiting for you. It's just for you to go out and shine and be all that you are meant to be. So let's now go through the journal prompts. Journal prompt number one. Reflect on a time when you felt most confident and self-assured. What made you feel this way? I want you to really think about it. So the first part, reflect on a time where you felt most confident and self-assured. That's the first thing. It comes to you, you write that down. Then you dig in. What made you feel this way? Number two, write about a person or event that had a significant impact on your life and why it was so meaningful. Number three, Think about your values and beliefs. How have they changed over time and why? This is one of my favorite journal prompts that's on the list because it discusses one of my favorite things and that is change. Remember earlier I said change is the only constant? Yeah. Number four, what are your passions and hobbies? And how have they shaped who you are today? Number five, write about a significant accomplishment you are proud of and what you learned from it. Number six, reflect on a time when you faced a challenge and how you overcame it. Number seven, what are your biggest fears and how do they affect your daily life? That one is a, that one is a deep one. That one is a deep one. But you can do hard things. Okay. All right. Number eight. 
Write about a relationship that has been meaningful to you and what you learned from it. Number nine, think about your long-term goals and how they align with your sense of purpose. Number 10, reflect on your strengths and weaknesses and how they impact your relationships and personal growth. Know thyself. Number 11, write about a time when you took a risk and what the outcome was. Number 12, what are your sources of stress and how do you manage them? Number 13, reflect on a time when you felt truly content and fulfilled. What was happening in your life at that time? This question is a big revealer. <laughs> and the last journal prompt, write about what you believe is your unique contribution to the world and how you plan to make a difference. And I want you to remember, these are journal prompts. This is not a quiz, okay? Use this as a time of reflection. Light a candle. Get a nice, I was about to say bottle of wine. No, glass, okay? Or some water with some fruit in it if you, you know, if wine is not your thing. Use this as a time. You're dating yourself. You're really getting to know yourself because, oh, people are talking about, self-improvement and it ain't gotta be hoard you don't want some of that because i wanted some of that because i was realizing that there are persons all here that they're good they're improving and yes they are you know meeting upon some bumpy rocks but that core is comfortable and the reason is because they're fully tapped in and understand exactly who they are and what their strengths are and what it is that they love to be doing and they're using that thing that was gifted to them. But if you don't know what that thing is, then how you gonna use it, boo? You cannot use it. You cannot use it. Right? You have to know what the thing is but can't use a thing, the song. And if you don't understand Jamaican Patois, I said, you have to know what the thing is in order to be able to use the thing. Okay. All right, you guys. This was my first video podcast style content back. And boy, I spoke a lot. <laughs> but I enjoyed filming it and recording it and more than just me enjoying it, this is what I was meant to be doing at this particular time in my life. And I am committed to doing it. And I am showing up here week after week to show you that you can do it too. There's something that you know you're supposed to be doing. It comes so easy to you. So you disregard it. But I'm trying to show you that that's what you're supposed to be doing. I remember I made a video a couple of months ago, right? And I spoke about how I've always wanted to teach. And it wasn't until I recognized the hold that money has on our society that I switched to wanting to be an entrepreneur. And the joy that I get from being able to be an entrepreneur that teaches. And I'm only saying that this was not part of what I was supposed to talk about, but I'm saying that because I wanted to remind you of the age that we're living in. You can merge two careers. You can merge, two, you can merge five careers just like that. So those things that you know you want to do, you know that you're supposed to do, you enjoy them and they come so easy to you, you can do them. Don't allow anyone to put you in a box, including you. All right? 
because there are things that you're meant to do that is specifically for right now, this time. And it's just for you to walk into it, for you to understand who you are and then walk into it. All right, you guys, thank you so much for listening my podcast peeps and for my video people youtube hello thank you so much for watching um this has been a fun time we're gonna keep it rolling i have so many videos and podcast episodes planned under this series u 2.0 and i will see you guys back here same time same place next week don't forget to like share comment subscribe rate what else is there to do do all the youtube things and all the podcast things okay if you're listening on apple Podcasts, please please give me a rating on your mail bag we said please two time jesus the pride full job cutting me is saying why you begging <laughs> but Give me a rating, please. Pretty please. Thank you. If you're listening anywhere else, podcast, do whatever it is that I want you to do. If you want to review or rate, do that. Like the podcast so that I follow the podcast so they know that you like it. If you're on YouTube, like the video, share, subscribe, comment. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. I have been your host, <laughs> Ashley Renitz, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.